Okay, so here I am running it for the first time with full batteries, showing 761 watts going out, four hours of runtime at 98%, five hours at 100%, uh, uh, 651. Seven sixty one, six fifty seven. So I don't know why the difference, but anyway, there it goes. Okay, just want to show you here. They've been charging for a few hours now, a couple of hours maybe. So this one's at forty eight percent. It started at twenty two percent. At six hundred watts, I brought up the wattage a little bit, so it's still charging a little slower than I should charge it. But I'd rather do it slow than fast. That's what she said. Anyway, um, this one had uh, less charge taken out, so it's charging a little bit better. Okay, and then, see what the solar panels are sucking in right now. Here we go. Putting in 2100 watts into the grid. And it's only about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. It's going to get better. So, so far, when I was thinking of charging them with solar panels, I have the EcoFlow feeding the house. The house feeding, excuse me, <laughs> the Grogue Watt grid tie inverter is feeding the house. There we go. And then the house is feeding my EcoFlows. Now each one of these outlets are running off a different breaker. So they're each 110. Put them together here, the sub panel creates 240. So anyway, this is my connector for the house. Yesterday it did pop the breaker after about five hours of running. So, but anyway, I'll put this video together soon. Okay, here we go. Now this is charging my two Delta Pros at 600 watts apiece and running my TV and the refrigerators and everything else. But this is because the solar panels are working. Okay, so today I'm doing another test run here. I don't know why it's reading this way. I guess it's because it's on two different breakers, but this one's showing a seven hours runtime with 474 watts that it's taking, and this one's 20 hour runtime, which is only 137 watts. So, because the two switches that are here, one side is running one breaker, which is on this here, and then the other one here. So, they're not running the same part of the house, so they're running different parts. So, anyway. Uh, this is the last video I'm going to do so that I can put a video together for you um, and basically show you what it does. Okay? Jump pause. Okay, so here we are, my bedroom, running the whole thing. And the rest of the house looks like everything is running. So, but here's the big thing here. Let's see if it runs. TV and the AC. No, no, no. No, it all works. Relax. So, AC just turned on. Yeah, AC, TV works. Why are you doing something? Okay, outside light works. Okay, close that door. Close that door. Okay. okay. Kitchen work. You cannot use the microwave. Okay. So. Okay. So that is a 30,000 BTU. And uh, let's see what it looks like now. Okay, so now that we're running more stuff, let's see. Okay, here we go. 
So I guess this is the side that's running the AC unit because we're running a thousand watts here. Shows that it has a three hour run time. Now these are both daisy chained together, so I got 240 watts. This one's got five hours run time. So all together, I'll probably get about four good hours of run time. And I guess my thing will break there. Now I also have my sons in their room. Uh, I do run LED on everything. So we'll come back and check in a few hours and see how this thing's going. So, meantime, shut everything off here. All right. Say goodbye. Doing a little checkup on the system here. See what we got. Okay, so, probably 922 watts, 920 watts, got 80% to go. And putting out, uh, or pulling, or putting out about 700 watts, more or less, 650 watts. Got four hours to go, it's at 87%. Now, this is what it's showing here, I'm calculating on the hours, okay? But literally one minute that was left on the timer took us 45 minutes for it to wear out. I gave up, couldn't wait any longer. So... This is still running my whole house and my air conditioning. So check up with you guys later. All right, so it's 10 o'clock now. Looks like I got 34% uh, left on this one, one hour. Running at 740 watts approximately. And wow, I got three hours on this one. So it's still at 54% and it's still running right around 600 watts. I wish I knew exactly what this one was running, what side of the house this was running. I take it this must be running my AC unit. Anyway, that's awesome. I wonder, and I'm not sure, if this is going to feed this side and still run off at 240. So my last test, it did just shut off on me, just kind of just, bloop, whole house went dark. So, but it looks like I have one hour left here. So it's a little after 10 o'clock at night. I turned it on at 7. It's already been running three hours. I'm going to wait till 11 and see what happens. Anyway, uh, so far so good. All right, so it's about 11.15, and it looks like one of the generators decided to give up already. Mm, I don't know. We still have power on both of them. Oh, yeah, I'm down to 10%. That's why. I wonder if I switch them over, what would happen? Anyway, let me see what happens here. Okay, so I do have it set, so it shuts off at 10%. So I still had a little bit, a little bit left over. So, but I don't want them to run all the way down. So, on this one here, as you can see, I have 39% still left. So, because it was sucking power both ways. Anyway, uh, let me shut this down. Plug. Shut that down. And turn on the main power. Okay, power back on. There we go. Shut this headlight off. Hurry up, Enola. Come on, hurry up. Okay, so time to shut them off. Get them ready for tomorrow. this back in this is my solar unit gotta plug this in because if not what happens is is tomorrow morning I'll forget and it won't automatically start feeding my house 
So, anyway. So that is the second test, and tomorrow I'll finish up this video. Over and out. Okay, Island Prepper here. i try to make this pretty quick. I'm going to give my final review on my GoFlow Delta Pros. Tell you how I feel about them. Um, overall, I am not 100% happy, and I'll tell you why. As you can see, I finally got these charged at 100%. There we go. It says 10 days. And there's that one too. It takes quite a few hours because I'm, I'm slow charging them. Okay. But um, they do uh, charge up to 100%. Now, these aren't 100% bad, but they're really not worth the money that I paid for them. So, and I'll explain to you why when I connect to this hub here, for some reason or another, I'm supposed to combine both and give me 72, uh, I guess, kilowatt hours of power. And what it does is it each wire just sucks power from each one separately. So because this is 240, it's connected to two separate uh, uh, two separate uh, breakers. So and uh, what I did was these two wires come in down here. Feeds up here. I put it in my sub breaker here. Okay. So uh, as you can see, this has a shut off here and a shut off here. And that connects to my uh, generator. Okay. Which is here. But each half of this is connected to its own 30 amp fuse. And it covers a certain half of the house. So what it's doing here, this, this one was actually sucking out a thousand watts of power at night last night. Or just a little under a thousand watt and this one was only sucking out between six and seven hundred watts of power it's not supposed to do that it's supposed to combine you just get one unit and that's why you have you're you're using a a combiner hub or a combiner box or a combiner unit whatever you want to call it this one here and it's one connector but it wasn't sucking the power properly it was splitting the power up between both units and individually feeding the house I don't understand why I did that. So what happened is um, I would have been able to get about five or six hours worth of power out of this one and only three to four hours out of this one. So, or I had to shut off the air conditioning and run each at a time. And then I could probably run about six hours each and only run the fans. But I'm in a tropical island. So I don't believe that in a tropical island you should be without air conditioning. Anyway, let's make this long story short. First of all, disclosure. I am not an electrician. I don't install solar panels or, or inverters or anything like that. I have no certifications. All I have is what I've learned on YouTube myself, a lot of reading, trial and error, cost of money for trial and error. Every time you trial and error, every, the error costs you money. So that is how I learned how to do this. Now, my grid tie system, it's a grow watt system excellent product okay uh the solar panels i installed that with my sons the system i installed with my sons and basically even the hot water heater i installed with my sons and my wife and we got everything done in this house diy we did everything ourselves you know um i am not a licensed electrician so i'm not going to recommend for anybody to do this unless you feel secure with what you're doing you have enough experience but basically get a damn licensed electrician Okay, especially if you're in the U.S., you get into big trouble. I'm in Puerto Rico. It's not that bad here. So, but I do have an electrician friend who come over and said, give me his blessing. He says it looks good, like a professional. Anyway, um, with that said, I'll let you know that when we bought this house a little over three years ago, my nine-year-old son did all the electrical in the house. He installed all the uh, uh, switches, all the um, outlets. Uh, he switched everything into deco uh, switches. So, and, uh, you know, all I had to do was show him how to do it. I had to buy him little tools that were a little small for his hand. But he did the entire house by himself. My older son actually helped painting and do the construction with me. So, but um, that's pretty much what I think about electrical. You know, you do need to have your shit together if you do it commercially or for someone else. You know, my neighbors asked if I could do theirs, and I said no. Uh, anyway, my review on the EcoFlow. 
No, not ready for, for, for sale yet. This is very expensive item. It is convenient to have. It's good to have. Okay, not worth the money I paid for it, though. Okay, uh, if I were to buy it in a store here in Puerto Rico, which they have an exclusivity on, and that's called something called price fixing here, uh, that's $10,000 for those two units, plus, plus, plus. I bought these in the States, and I had them shipped down. They were a little over $3,000 apiece. These are expensive units, not worth the, the price, number one, because they don't last. So if you're going to have a generator, my, my gas generator, I put four gallons of gas in it. It runs eight, nine hours, and it runs my entire house. I don't have to worry about half of it not working because it's, it's, it's you know, only working half the house. So, and I run my air conditioning with it and everything else. Even my small little uh, 2300 watt uh, inverter generator that runs, you know, for eight hours on a gallon of gas. This, if one of the inverters, if one of the batteries is doing a little bit more load than the other, it's going to shut off when that small, that, that uh, other battery running the other load shuts off. My whole house shuts off. So even though the other battery had another three hours that it can run, the uh, one that shuts off the first is the one that controls everything. So basically, wow, what what a big mistake they made when they did this. You know, if you're going to get 240 or you're going to do a combiner so you can run both of them to 240 volts or 220 volts, you should be able to run both of them and they should equally discharge at the exact same time. You know, uh, not discharge one faster than the other because it's running, one is running the AC and the other one is not running an AC unit. And that one running the AC unit discharges faster and they both shut off. Not good. So for you to actually have a good runtime of eight, nine hours, I would literally have to have the additional two batteries, backup batteries that attach to the back, and uh, and probably even the gas generator that goes to it. And if I go that route, I'm I'm at you know fourteen fifteen thousand dollars. It's ridiculous, you know. If I buy it here, it's expensive as hell. But if I buy it even in the states, the the uh, uh, additional batteries are almost three thousand dollars a piece. Once it goes through shipping and everything else. So I'm looking at uh, a lot of money and for something that has not been perfected yet. So uh, I'm going to give it three stars. Uh, their service in the sales department, that part, I give it three stars. Uh, I've been trying to collect my tax money that they charged me knowing that it was being shipped out. And again, they don't even answer the calls. They will not answer the emails. They just ignore you. So like it's, I'm going to go away. Anyway, this the service when it comes to the repair, so the support that you get, that was excellent. Very good. Shipping Crowley, excellent. Grow what? Inverters. Great inverters. An excellent service. EcoFlow, I'm not going to recommend it. Don't waste your money yet. Uh, get get yourself a, a cheap uh, system in your house. Try to DIY it. It's really not that hard. I'm from Florida originally. We had hurricane. I went through Andrew and I went through all these different hurricanes in central Florida that hit. So get a gas generator because you're going to probably need it. If not, these are excellent. If you're going to go camping and stuff like that. But $3,000 for a camping freaking generator. Come on, man. That's ridiculous. Uh, and then you have to carry a solar panel on you. No. Uh, like I said, I will not recommend them. Uh, it's not ready. Is the product a good product? Probably. Uh, it's too too early to tell. I've only had them three or four days. And I've only connected it to my house twice. So, uh, Island Prepper, over and 